Okay, that single image width, the way we calculate it is we take the whole width of this container over here and then we subtract from it the width of this left side here and the width of this right side here. So if we want to get the width of where an image is supposed to be, mind you, it's not the width of the actual image. It's actually how wide we want the image to be because the image only has space to be in this area here so we're going to calculate how big this area is will be and then we're going to actually set the width of whatever images you've placed so each of these images this one two three and whichever images inside of this wrapper here will be given that width okay let's go back to our file and then continue writing our javascript and one more um variable that we did not calc we didn't we weren't we did not pass in as an option but calculated dynamically is this transparent width over here and the way we got that is we said this dot right transparent element dot width and as you can see right transparent element is that one that we've selected using jquery at the top here so we calculated its width and then we store it as transparent width so we use that transparent width because it's the same it has the same width as the left transparent element as well so right transparent element has the same width as left so we just needed to calculate the width for one of those elements and then we use that to calculate a single image width. Remember the previous Im diagram that I showed you? The single image width is the width of this space over here. As you can see, my mouse circling it. Back in our JS file. All right, so we'll continue. So now that we set up all the variables that we need in our function namespace, we're going to have to call a method in it. And that in it will set the default behavior when the, for when the plugin just loads. So we haven't written that function yet, but we'll call it and then write that function. So it's called init and it belongs to this function's namespace. So we'll say this dot init and init in here just is a shorthand for initialization. So now we're going to go ahead and actually write the init function. And how we're going to do that is we're going to add it as a pro prototype of this function over here. So we're going to say this function name dot prototype dot init equals to function and the reason we're using prototype guys is no matter how many times our plugin has been instantiated all all instances of our plugin will share this um very this function in it which belongs to this um, function over here all in all instances of our plugin will share this one function in it that, just to save space so that's why we're doing that okay so now inside of the init function what we're going to do is we're going to refer this the parent of init and the parent for init is this function here ls advanced slider if we want to have access to all these variables inside of here what we need to do is we need to store the instance of that function inside of init function here so we, we say since the instance of the parent of init which is this function is this inside of here that is it's inside of this so we just store it so we know what it is because it's a bit um confusing to always be saying this because when we are inside of init we might think that this actually refers to the init function whilst it doesn't so we'll say var parent equals to this so this parent here if we we'll see it, we'll know that we're referring to the parent of init. Okay. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to store how many images we actually have on our page. So we'll say number of images equals to. So if you've noticed, in whilst we're storing all the options here, we did actually store the elements themselves by passing them to the jQuery selector. But as for images, which is carousel item, we actually just stored the class. That is because I'll show you in a moment later why we didn't say dollar sign and then pass it this class over here. So in order to get the image number of images, we actually have to pass that class name to the jQuery selector. So we'll say parent dot carousel item. So we've selected the image, all the images actually. So now we're going to just call the length method on, on it. Okay, now that we have all the images, what we're going to do is, 
So if you remember, we actually did calculate the weight of a single image. So now what we're going to do is, since we have all these image items over here, we're actually going to say that set the width of all the images on the page because we already have the width calculated for us. So we select all the images, then we say dot width, and then up over here, um, where is that actually? Let's have a look. Pen dot. Okay, uh huh. Single image width. So when we say parent dot single image width, we're going to get the width that has to be applied to each and every image. So we say select all the carousel items that is the images and then set the width to parent dot single image width. Okay, so that's done. So now we're going to deal with the wrapper. The wrapper as well, we need to set the width to the sum of all the images some put together so we say parent dot wrapper dot width so we're gonna say number of images multiplied by the width of a single image width so we just get that single image width over here I'll show you in a moment what's happening okay in this diagram here we're setting the width of a wrapper so as you can see this wrapper here contains all of these images so if the width of for example a single image is let's say 10 pixels okay 10 is a bit too small let's say something like 100 pixels and then all of these images are contained inside of this wrapper so if one image is 100 pixels and there's five images so how do we calculate the width of the wrapper we take the width of one single image, multiply it by the number of images. So that's what we're doing in our JavaScript file. Okay, so now that you've got the hang of how we're calculating the width of the wrapper, let's carry on with the rest of our. So back in our, so back in our browser here, if you've noticed, the left transparent element and the right transparent element, they are not appropriate. They don't have the right height applied to them. So we've actually in our plugin when we're calling it. We did pass in a custom height that we want everything on this page to be set. So even this element here does not have the right height applied to it. So that's why you see all these come down here and then everything looks juggled up. So we're going to set that up right now. Apply the right height to the appropriate elements.